How's it going eliminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to quickly set the gap on a coil on just about any lawnmower. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So I'm out in the shop today working on a lawn boy, model number 10201, that one of my customers gave to me for free. He said that it did not run, he didn't know what was wrong with it, but he said that I could have it for free. This is one of the newer style Silver Series Lawn Boys, and this one has a metal deck. It still has a two-stroke engine, so basically what I'm doing is just going through a quick diagnosis to see what is wrong with this lawnmower, and that'll help me identify the parts that I'm going to need to purchase and the work that is going to have to be put into this so that I can ultimately sell this and hopefully make some money because I know a lot of guys that are interested in buying these two-stroke Lawn Boys primarily for cutting ditches because they do not have crankcase oil. So it's a two-stroke engine, which means you're mixing the oil in with the gas and it's getting lubricated that way. So unlike a four-stroke engine that has oil in the crankcase, these units, you can go down a steep ditch and cut, and you don't have to worry about seizing a crankshaft. You don't have to worry about you know seizing a valve due to improper lubrication because that oil can't reach those rotating assemblies. So one of the first things I do with pretty much every mower that I get in, take the air cleaner off, spray some carb cleaner in there, pull it, and see if it fires. This one did not. So I am currently in the process of checking the spark, and I'm gonna show you guys how I do that without the recoil housing on the unit. So just like any lawnmower, on the top of the flywheel here, there's going to be your recoil cup. That is what the recoil arms grab onto. And there's going to be a nut on top of the crankshaft. So using my cordless drill here with an 11 16 socket, we're going to be spinning the flywheel. That's going to rotate the flywheel clockwise, which is going to allow the magnet on this flywheel to pass by the coil. And then using my light up spark tester, we're gonna see if the light illuminates. Now, in order to rotate the flywheel around and disengage the lawnmower's kill switch, you're going to have to press down on the lever up top on the handlebars here. So to do that, I'm just using a quick clamp to hold that down. So we'll rotate the flywheel around. So you guys can see that unfortunately we did not get spark. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the coil is bad and I'm gonna show you a couple reasons why. First off is going to be this little wire right there that goes to the bottom of the coil. That is known as your kill wire or your grounding wire for the coil. So that wire, it always leads back to a kill switch which we have on this mechanism here. So there's going to be an arm on this unit and that arm is controlled by your control lever right up there. Now the way this control lever here works is quite simple. When you release the handle on top of your handlebars, it grounds that wire that leads back to your coil, thus grounding out your coil so your coil will no longer produce spark. So even though our handle up top is clamped down and the kill switch should be disengaged, there could be an issue with the kill switch itself. So the easiest way to test that is to come down to the coil and what you're gonna wanna do is unplug the kill wire right there and then just make sure that it doesn't ground to the coil. If we have spark with that kill wire unplugged, then that means that our coil is good and we have to have a closer inspection of the kill switch itself. So drill's hooked up again. We'll check for spark one more time. So we've spun the flywheel around and tested the coil both with the kill wire plugged in and unplugged. And unfortunately, we haven't gotten spark in either test. So does that mean that this coil is bad? Well, there's one more thing that we can check and that is going to be what's known as the armature air gap. That is going to be the distance between the coil's terminals right there and the magnet on the flywheel. Now you probably noticed that the title of today's video is how to quickly set the gap on a lawnmower coil and not how to properly set the gap on a lawnmower coil. And that's because there's actually two different ways of doing this. The proper way to do it is to use a set of feeler gauges. 
These are pieces of metal that are designed to be a certain thickness. You guys can see here probably right there if I can get it in the right lighting angle that this one is a 0 0.012. So that's going to be 12 thousandths of an inch. Now the issue with using a set of feeler gauges is that not everybody has a set of feeler gauges. And even if you did, you may lack the proper spec because every engine is going to have a different spec for the armature air gap on the coil. You would usually have to reference your engine's service manual and the manufacturer is going to provide you with a spec. Now generally that is around 10 to 12 thousandths of an inch. However, you could get coils that are like 8 thou or maybe 14 thou depending on the manufacturer. So it can always differ. So in the event that you don't have a set of feeler gauges or you just don't have your manufacturer's spec for that armature air gap, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly set it using a simple business card. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is rotate your flywheel to the position where the magnets are interfacing with the two terminals on your coil, right? Right there, you want them to be lined up as close as possible. And that's because on a lot of these flywheels, you actually have a magnet that is bolted in or set into the flywheel. So depending on the design, the magnet may stick out a little bit farther than the outer edge of the flywheel right here. So you guys can see that this one there at the same distance, but you guys always, as a rule of thumb, just wanna line up your magnet. Then using your business card, you are going to push it in between the flywheel and the coil terminals, just like that. Then what you can do is go ahead and undo your coil bolts. Once you do get those coil bolts loosened off, the coil will actually grab onto the magnet through the thickness of the business card there. So you really don't even have to push this down. You can basically just line it up. The magnet will pull the coil into the flywheel and now I can go ahead and tighten up my coil bolts. Now I don't personally have a service manual for one of these 10201 lawn boys, but from what I could find online, they say that the recommended armature air gap for that coil is approximately 10 thousandths of an inch. Now reading that out as a decimal, that's going to be 0 0.010. For the purpose of today's video, I went ahead and measured my business card using a vernier caliper and the thickness of my business card is 12 thousandths of an inch. You guys can see it there, 0 0.012. I'll rotate the flywheel here so that I can remove my business card and I'll get the drill and we'll test this coil one more time with the kill wire still disconnected and see if we have spark. Now you guys have to keep in mind that even though the recommended armature air gap for this lawn boy was approximately 10 thousandths of an inch and I'm using my business card to set it to approximately 12 thousandths of an inch, so that's an increase of two thousandths of an inch. You have to remember that when we inserted the business card, it fit in there quite loosely, which means that the armature air gap was actually greater than 12 thousandths of an inch. So at least now we know that the coil is set to a tighter tolerance than it was before and should, in theory, increase our chances at getting spark as long as the coil is in good enough condition to produce it. So the coil's been gapped to 12 thousandths of an inch with the drill set up we'll go ahead and spin this flywheel around and check for spark unfortunately there is no spark which means that this coil is bad and I do have to replace it that is one of the common issues that plagues these older lawn boys is that the coils go and once they go you can't fix them you just have to replace them well, that's gonna wrap up today's video and hopefully that helps you guys address any issues you may or may not have with a lawnmower coil. Again, test your coil. If it doesn't produce spark, disconnect the kill wire. If it still doesn't produce spark, go ahead and make sure that your armature air gap is set roughly within spec and then test it again. In the case of this lawn boy, the coil just wouldn't produce spark, which means if I want to fix this thing up and sell it, I will have to find either a used coil or I'll have to buy a new one to replace it with. And just as a little sneak peek, you guys are gonna to wanna to stay tuned to the channel where I unbox this bad boy. So stay tuned for that. Well, with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always, guys, thanks for watching.